Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can send Blue Iris motion alerts via MQTT to your Home Assistant dashboard. So let's get started. Before we get started, I should mention this is not a review for Blue Iris. I use that software and have for years. What I'm doing here today is just showing you how to get the motion sensors into Home Assistant. And there's some settings in Blue Iris we'll cover, and there's some settings in Home Assistant that we'll cover. So let's go over to my Home Assistant test setup. And we're going to add, first of all, um, a prerequisite is you must have HACS installed. HACS is the Home Assistant Community Store. And if you don't have that installed, I have a video in my Back to the Basics series that shows you how to install that. So go watch that video if you need to, and then come back. Once you do have that installed, you can click on HACS, and it's going to be an integration. So we're going to search for the, the Blue Iris NVR integration. And I'll read through the description here um, normally and just make sure it's what I'm looking for. And then once you do that, you can install the repository in HACS. And I'm not going to do a beta version. I'm going to do the latest production version. Of course, when it's installed, it's going to be located in Config Custom Components Blue Iris. You'll need to restart Home Assistant before changes to integrations are applied. So let's go ahead and install it. Now that it is installed, we should see down here the, the bottom that it is installed and it is pending a restart. So now I'm gonna to go to my Home Assistant configuration. I'm gonna to go to Server Controls. And you can also get to the same thing by hitting C on your keyboard and typing Server Controls. I always check my configuration because what I don't, what I do sometimes is make changes and I forget to restart and I don't remember I've made those changes. So it's always good to check your configuration before you start restart so that you don't have some hidden change you forgot about. And my configuration is valid. So I'm going to go ahead and perform a restart. Okay. Home assistance now restarted. So my next step is to go into configuration integrations and we're going to add the blue iris integration in Home Assistant. Now, you, we installed the integration in Home Assistant Community Store. The next step would be to add the integration directly in Home Assistant. Now, this won't show up unless you've done the HACS step first. So it's a two-part step, a uh, two-step two part, two-step process. So let's click on Blue Iris NVR. We're going to need to configure it. I'm going to put in my host, which is on my local network. Port number is 81. And I'm going to add my username and password and then submit. So it's found all of my cameras and devices in Home Assistant. And I can set the name, the location for each one of these if I want to. I'll just set a few of these and, and then we'll just continue on. And now we have our Blue Iris in VR. It's got 11 devices. So here are all my cameras plus any of the grouped cameras that I set up in Home Assistant or in Blue Iris. So I have all cameras all camera cycle, the backyard, the front yard, the group of front three cameras, um, the backyard cameras, just everything that it finds. And then if we go back, we'll see that we have 57 entities. And we don't need all of these for what we're gonna do today. So now you have Blue Iris successfully set up and talking to your Blue Iris server. Now we need to go into Blue Iris and we need to set up MQTT on Blue Iris. And so we'll do that next. Okay, so the first thing to do on Blue Iris is to go into settings and you're going to go into digital IO and IOT under MQTT, click on configure. And I've already got this set up on my side. So uh, it's enabled. First of all, you can add a description. Client ID is Blue Iris and the server address will be this right here. Uh, whatever your server address is, whatever your, your login credentials are. And you can test it, although somebody has noted that if you test, sometimes it crashes Blue Iris. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, you can test it to make sure all this stuff is correct if you want to. And then once you've got that set up, you're going to go into each camera and you're going to set up each camera like this. You'll right click on a camera, click on camera settings, and then under alerts tab, you're going to click on, on alert to start with, add a new alert. The new alert is going to be a web request or MQTT. We're going to choose MQTT topic. And for the topic, we're going to call it Blue Iris ampersand cam, which gives it the name of the camera and status. 
And then post payload will be uh, type. And then ampersand type, that's a variable it's going to give. Trigger is going to be on, capital O-N. And I'm going to click on retain message because I want that to stay that way. Uh, I want it to stay this way whenever I restart. I want the previous status of the camera motion to show up on my dashboards. So click on that and say OK. On the reset message, we're going to do the same thing with a off instead of on. So web requester MQTT. And we're going to change this to MQTT topic. Same topic is going to be blue iris. Now I have run this. Um, I have run this directly to MQTT with a sensor created in my sensors file without the integration and that works as well. But this uh, is with the integration, the topic and the post payload are what you need to set for the integration to work correctly. So then we'll say type and ampersand type again, which is a variable. And then the trigger is off in capital letters. And again, I'll retain the flag, the message. Let me just double check it. I know it's hard to see because um, it's small type, but I'll just double check my formatting. And you must select at least one profile for this to be active in. And, and then you can make this active in any of your motion zones and any of your other sources, trigger sources. I'm gonna leave it for everything. And I actually have two of these, so I'll remove the old one. And then OK. And then when I say OK here, it's going to reset the camera and set the configuration. OK, so back in Home Assistant, we've already set up our integration. And we've, we've now set up our blue iris MQTT for our alerting. And what we can do now is go into configuration integrations and look at the blue iris integration. I've got 11 devices here and I'm going to search for just motion. I went down and I walked around the cameras. Um, actually, let's go back here and search for uh, entities and look for motion. I walked around the cameras and I got a couple of them to trigger. And I know this because I use what's called MQTT Explorer to look at the MQTT feed. And so the garage camera, uh, shows motion. So we'll click on it and look at it here. And you can see this teeny tiny little slither here, Sli slither, sliver. Uh, this shows motion detected in the garage on the garage motion. So we know that we're getting data in here from MQTT uh, via Blue Iris or Blue Iris via MQTT. And the th same thing should occur for the front porch. Let's see if that's true. And we do, we have some motion detected right here. And that's motion coming from, and you can see right here, motion detection motion, uh, and then motion cleared. So we're, we're getting stuff in. So are we, what are we gonna do with this now? What we can do is, let me just double check and make sure I have um, the custom button card. And I don't, so I'm gonna install um, the custom button card. So I'll click on this button over here add repository, look for custom button card, or just button card. And that's this right here. I'm going to install this one in HACS. And I need to clear the browser cache in order for it to, to you be able to be used. And so I'll do that now. Okay, so we have custom button card that we should be able to use now. So I'm gonna go into my dashboard. I'm gonna edit the dashboard. In fact, let's let's just create a new dashboard here. So I'll edit the dashboard and I'll just create a new um, motion or cameras dashboard, cameras, and then we'll just save it. We'll, uh, we'll not do panel mode. 
Okay, so we're going to add a card, and we're going to we're going to add that button card we just put in. So you, you'll notice you have the standard button card from Home Assistant, and then you have the custom button card. And the custom button card is here. You still have to do a lot of work YAML wise. Not a lot of work. You have to type it manually. You can't. It doesn't have a bunch of things in here for this. Uh, there's nothing to edit in the uh, visual editor, so you have to do it this way. So I'm going to type in the entity. The entity is going to be the binary sensor that was created with the Blue Iris integration. And the binary sensor is actually the, the name of the camera. Um, garage motion. In your Blue Iris setup, whatever you name those cameras is what it's going to be showing up here as on your um, uh, in your binary sensors. The entity is that, and then I'm gonna give it an icon of, you know, I'm probably just gonna leave it as a motion. I like that. I did camera, um, so I could tell it was a camera motion, but you can leave it as, as whatever you want. I'll just leave it as camera for now. Uh, name is gonna be, of course, garage. Color type is going to be card and, and all of these features uh, for the the um, custom button card and you can see uh, there are just tons and tons and tons of features here I mean way too many to go over y y this is a super highly customizable card uh, it's my fit one of my favorite cards actually in home assistant um, oops so a uh, color type is sets the color type of the entire card. If I choose card here, uh, and then I want to do a state change or a change of the background whenever the state changes. So when it goes from um, off, which is no motion, to on, so on denotes motion. I'm going to set the color of the card to red. And I'm going to change the icon to MDI quotes here, MDI motion. So I will save this now and it will look exactly like it does there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go make some motion on the garage and we will see if that actually does some motion. You can see here now that it turned yellow. It's supposed to turn red, but it did turn yellow, and that's because I walked in front of the camera and the motion was detected, which then sent it through MQTT into Home Assistant from Blue Iris. So that's working the way it's supposed to, other than the color issue. Now you can get fancy if you want to add a picture card to this, which will have your camera on it. So we'll do a picture entity card. I'll change the entity, which will be the motion sensor. So I'll choose the front porch motion sensor in this case. The name is optional, but I'll put porch anyway. I don't need this image path. Camera entity is going to be the front porch. And then the camera view optional, it's, you see it's black and white here. It'll change the color and it'll go from clear to, to detected whenever it sees uh, motion on the porch. And then I'll leave aspect racial there. Um, I can get rid of porch because I know which one that is. And then I'll leave everything else the same. So now uh, let's close this. And now what we'll do is we'll simulate some motion on the porch. I'll go down there and walk in front of that. And this should turn colors colorful and show a 10 second snapshot of, um, of me walking on the porch. So let me go try that out. You can see that it changed to detected and turned colorful, which means it saw some motion on the camera using the MQTT setup and everything. Also, it's only doing 10 second, a snapshot every 10 seconds. It doesn't do full motion video. I've found that if I set it to live rather than auto, number one, it doesn't ever show detected. It's always this way. And then it also uses a lot of CPU resources. So I just leave it at the 10 second uh, snapshot. And of course, motion cleared there as well. You can see that. 
So that's just a sampling of what you can do with the Blue Iris uh, NVR integration from Home Assistant. Uh, this gets you the ability to sit, set up uh, some motion alerts on your dashboards with Home Assistant and Blue Iris. Uh, on mine, I do all five of my cameras for motion sensing. It also gives the ability to set profiles. For example, I set a nighttime profile when, when, I, when the alarm is set at nighttime. I set an away profile whenever the alarm is set to away mode. All that can be done programmatically through Home Assistant, uh, but this just kind of touches the surface. Let me know if you have any questions uh, on any of this. I hope it was helpful to you a little bit. Hit that like button if you like the, uh, the video. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And then hit me up on Discord if you have any specific questions as well. Leave comments down below. Hit the bell icon. You know all the good stuff, right? That keeps you in the loop on what's going on in my world. And we'll see you on the next video.